Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing another massive tech review. We are finally, finally unboxing the GoPro Hero 10 Black. Now I have already unboxed this camera, started testing this camera, it's in process rather, but I have filmed the entire unboxing experience. I did pick up the GoPro 10 Creator Bundle. So I'm gonna show you exactly what you get in the box, exactly whatever you need to know if you've just picked up your first GoPro. Now I know the GoPro 10 is a revolutionary GoPro camera. It is supposed to be the highest spec and the best GoPro camera ever made so yeah I am going to show everyone who's new to GoPros what you need to know when you pick up your GoPro camera all the basics how to install your memory card how to get started with your camera how to update your firmware for the first time what each button does and how you control this camera for the first time ever I know GoPros are getting extremely popular especially in the vlogging space I know a lot of people want to pick up this camera right now because it's so small so powerful so pocketable also it's really affordable compared to most of the other vlogging cameras on the market that's exactly why I'm making this video this is the ultimate beginner's guide for the GoPro Hero 10 Black. So once you're done taking out the packaging that the GoPro camera comes in, you're going to see that this is the point where you're going to be at. You're going to have a little case with GoPro branding, very, very minimal on top, and you're going to have your GoPro and everything that you get inside of this little case. GoPro pretty much replaced their plastic boxes with a nice carry case with the GoPro Hero 9, and this is carried forward to the GoPro Hero 10 as well. I think it's really nice because you have a tiny little case that you can carry your GoPro and two or three small accessories when you're on the go, and you don't really have to invest in a GoPro KC or any of GoPro's extra protective cases when you just pick up your camera right at the beginning. I think it's really useful. Let's open up the box and take a look at what you get on the inside. You're gonna see the GoPro and all the accessories in the main pocket and on top you're gonna to see a bunch of literature that you're probably never going to read. There's an instruction with diagrammatic representation showing you how to use your GoPro camera, how to install your battery, how to get started. You also have GoPro stickers which I'm a super super big fan of. I think GoPro, Apple, DJI, all these companies have started putting out stickers in all their equipment. I think it's really nice to represent the brand and just to stick it onto your water bottle. I've always been a big fan of this. Of course you have a little bit of literature which you're not gonna read so we're gonna get rid of that right now. Now I know the main compartment looks a little messy and that's basically because I already took out the cardboard dividers that segregates everything. When you probably buy your camera and look at your main compartment it's gonna be well arranged all the accessories are gonna be segregated. In my case I'm testing my camera so it's already out. Okay it's finally time to look at the GoPro Hero 10 Black. As you guys can see the branding is a little different on this camera as compared to the GoPro Hero 9. The GoPro logo is in blue. You have your standard front screen which you had on the GoPro Hero 9 your new lens mod and you have the large back screen which is going to be your main point of interface with this camera. For the accessories that I actually received we have two batteries for the GoPro. Yes GoPros are battery guzzlers so you're going to want these new GoPro batteries. There is an enduro battery but you don't get that. You have the GoPro magnetic swivel clip which is fantastic. It's one of my favorite accessories. You can mount the GoPro onto this. You can use it as a clip mount. It's also magnetic and it's very very useful. I've been using this for a very long time and I'm really glad that I have two of them now. This in my opinion is the best GoPro hand grip and tripod combination. It is a tabletop little tripod, it's called the GoPro Shorty and it's also a hand grip that can be used for vlogging or just connecting your GoPro and taking it with you when you're on the go. It's perfect for travel. And of course you have your buckle mount which is used to mount your GoPro onto any accessory. You have your 3M GoPro sticky mounts. The one that you're looking at is used for curved surfaces like a helmet. You can put your GoPro onto a helmet and use it for POV kind of shots. I think it's very very useful. I use these on the ship all the time. You have an additional GoPro charging cable. I'm so glad this will include this. It's USB A to USB C. You can charge your GoPros off of this. It's perfect. And an additional thumb screw. It's really really useful to have more thumb screws. Now remember all the accessories that you've seen today are a part of the GoPro creator bundle. If you just buy the Hero 10 Black, you might not get all of this and you might have to pick up these accessories separately. As a new GoPro user, I think it's very, very important to understand your camera. See what all it has, see the buttons, take a look at the body and notice the differences. You can see the new GoPro Hero 10 Black is completely branded in blue, which is a nice little touch to keep it separate from the GoPro Hero 9 Black. The front screen, the back screen, the microphones in the camera, everything is identical to the Hero 9 Black, even the mounting feed that you can see at the bottom. Overall, the camera is very, very reminiscent of the Hero 9 Black, so it's the subtle touches that makes this camera truly special when you pick it up. I love the design of the GoPro Hero 9 as well as the GoPro Hero 10. I think they've done a fantastic little job and this camera is really really nice. The next thing I'm going to show you is what all opens up, where all the buttons are and that's what we're going to look at next. Okay, when you pick up your camera, you're going to see a small little door on the side. When you open this door up, this is exactly where you hold your battery as well as your SD card. 
Now GoPros normally use micro SD cards, I'll be talking about that a little further down the video. Overall on the side you can see your mode button and your power button. This is a dual button and it's used for various things. You have a mic below that. This little thing looks like a door but it's not. It's actually a draining mic for which you can use when you're taking your GoPro underwater. It's supposed to drain water from the mic really quickly so you can get the best audio. On the top, you have your shutter button. This button is used for starting and stopping recording, taking photographs. It's basically your main shooting button. What I'm pointing at right now is basically a camera microphone. The GoPro has three microphones on its body. It's spread around so it can give you 360 audio. It can capture everything around and GoPro audio has really, really improved over time. Right at the bottom of the GoPro, you have these two feet. These are nothing but connectors. They used to connect your GoPro to various accessories that you will buy for this product. For example, if you want to mount your GoPro to the Shorty selfie stick, it's really, really easy. You can see a similar feet connection point on the Shorty stick. You want to unscrew the thumb screw that's attached on top. And all you got to do is line up the feet into the connector. And that's basically it. Press it down, use the thumb screw to connect your GoPro and secure it firm onto the Shorty selfie stick. And you're more or less good to go. Now this connection system has become super popular and other brands such as DJI will also give you compatible connectors to use their cameras with GoPro accessories. Buckle mount is another way that GoPro gives you to connect your camera to all the accessories possible. It basically consists of a buckle with a rubber door that secures firmly onto any accessory that accepts this mounting system. Furthermore, you have your feet connector where you can line up your GoPro, use the thumb screw and secure it to that particular accessory. I think it's really really cool. This system was made so that you can shift your GoPro along with the buckle mount from one accessory to another without detaching your GoPro and the thumb screw. Now, as I mentioned, GoPros are pretty much battery guzzlers, especially when you're shooting in 5K. And the reason behind that is because you're shooting 5K on such a tiny little camera, so it definitely needs that much more power. So you definitely want to carry two, three, or maybe even four batteries with you when you're on the go. In order to insert the battery, you open up the side door, you line up the GoPro logo towards the lens and push the battery in. You're going to see it has a pull tab on the outside, which is easy for you to pull out your battery whenever required. Furthermore, charging can be done within the camera itself as you have a USB-C port at the bottom of the door on the inside. This keeps everything nice and waterproof because it's covered by the door. You want to use the cable that you get with your GoPro and you can connect this to a power bank or to a regular normal charging plug and it should work just fine. Also, the same cable is useful with the GoPro battery charger which is a dedicated charger that GoPro makes. I have a video on that on the channel so do check it out. I think it's really handy if you want to charge multiple batteries. The next thing you're going to need is a micro SD card. Now remember, GoPros take micro SD cards. There are various brands that are available on the market that you can use but what I prefer to use is SanDisk. I've been using SanDisk micro SD cards with my GoPro since the GoPro Hero 7 and I've come through a couple of generations using these cards. My preferred SD card is the SanDisk Extreme Pro but you can use the regular SanDisk Extreme as well. Remember you want to get an SD card with at least 128 gigabytes of storage or 256 or even higher because the GoPro shoot at very high resolutions and you'll be surprised how quickly these SD cards can actually fill up. There's an SD card slot on the right hand side within the camera battery compartment. All you got to do is line up the SD card, press it down and it's going to stay there nice and snug. It's really really important to have multiple SD cards with you if you're using your GoPro as your primary camera. Now I have only one and that's because I find it really hard to fill up a 128 GB SD card at one time. The next step is obviously to switch on your GoPro Hero 10 Black. It is officially time and you can see now that I've hit the power button, you have a really cool animation on the front screen that says 10 Black. The GoPro camera is finally on, we are ready to use it. All you got to do is look at the back screen and follow the prompts, choose your language. The next thing you're going to see is your legal stuff which is legal requirements that you just need to agree to. None of us are going to read that. You're going to get an option to switch on or off your GPS. I normally leave mine on and finally you're going to have to connect to the GoPro Quick app which is going to help you update your GoPro and get it quickly set up. You can do a manual setup using the computer but I always prefer using the Quick app because of convenience. So the Quick app is the app that GoPro has made. They renamed it last year. It was just called the GoPro app prior. You got to go to your phone and download this app. As you guys can see, I already have it. But if you don't, it's available on iOS and Android on both the app stores and it's free to use. When you open up the quick app, you have to go to your camera menu so that you can set up your new camera. Once I go there, you're going to be able to see my old GoPro Max, which I've been using for the last two years. I've deleted the GoPro Hero 9 from here because it just doesn't work anymore. You want to hit the plus icon on the top right hand side of the screen which is basically pushing your camera app to look for your new camera and you can see that your brand new GoPro has been detected by your phone using the app. The next thing you're going to do is going to click on pair camera and start the pairing process to connect your camera 
to your phone. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit pair and I'm gonna start the pairing process for my camera to my phone. During this process, I'll also be given an option to rename my GoPro. Now you can leave it as the same name, the default name that it comes with, but considering I have a GoPro Max, I like giving all my GoPro cameras an individual name. I'm just gonna call this one 10 Black and that's basically it. Now once this is done, my camera is going to finally connect to my phone, everything's set up and the next thing you're going to see on the screen is a camera update available. Now this basically means there's a new firmware or a new software update for your camera. GoPros primarily run on computational photography, magic and algorithms that GoPro puts into the software. So you want to update the latest firmware the moment you get your new camera. This is going to help out with stability improvements, it's going to give you the latest features that GoPro is adding to the cameras, it's going to make your camera a lot less buggy and I think it's a real important process. You're going to agree to the terms and conditions and let your camera start getting updated. This could take a few minutes so I'm going to go update my camera and we're going to continue with the video shortly after that. Okay, we are all set. As you can see, the firmware has been updated. The camera has been added to my app gallery. I can access my GoPro 10 using the quick app now. And you can see my GoPro is 100% ready to use. I can actually go out, start filming on this camera, get a bunch of footage, transfer the footage onto my phone and download and start editing and I'm ready to go. As you can see, I'm currently in video mode. Now this camera's main interface is gonna be the touchscreen. And you can see on the top of the touchscreen, you have your video icon that's very visible right now. There are various icons also displayed on the screen right now. You have your battery life on the top right hand side corner. You have your memory card storage capacity on the left hand side corner for the particular mode that you're in. And you have a bunch of shortcuts on your screen. Now in order to shift mode, you just got to swipe to the left or swipe to the right. As you go to the left, you go into time lapse mode, you swipe back to the right, you're back in video mode and you swipe to the right one more time, you're going to go into photo mode. There are three main modes that this camera actually works in and you can basically control everything you want to control right from there. Furthermore, you can also shift between your modes by using the mode or the power button. Like I said, the power button also acts as the mode button. By hitting it once, you can shift between various modes within your camera and you're good to go. Now, as you swipe down, you're going to be taken to your next menu, which is your main control center. It's pretty much similar to what you have on the iPhone. You have a bunch of different controls, such as your orientation lock. If you swipe to the right, you have a special menu, which shows you your connections as well as your general preferences. You also have a new icon in your control center known as video performance modes, which is going to alter the way your camera actually behaves when you choose a particular performance mode for your camera. More on that in another video. You don't really need to mess around with that right at the beginning. Like I said, when you hit the button on top, that's also known as the shutter button, you're going to start recording. As you can see on the screen, it's currently displayed that you've been recording for the last four seconds and the timer is going to continue until you hit the shutter button yet again. It's really, really easy to use this camera to record photos and videos. The moment you do record, you can check out your media by simply swiping up from the bottom of your screen. This is your playback menu. Over here, you can review your footage, you can scrub through it, you can edit it, you can trim it, you can delete it, you can do a complete playback of all the footage that you've shot right now. Now, as you go between photo, video and time-lapse mode, you're going to notice that there are a bunch of icons on your screen, four on the sides and one at the center. The icons on the sides are basically your shortcut settings, which are special settings that will remain on your screen that let you alter your settings of your camera in the recording mode that you actually choose. Now, these shortcuts are also customizable. Like you can see, I have the lens here, but I can change it for something else. But we're not going to run through that right now. I have a separate video for what settings and shortcuts I like to display on my screen, and we're going to go through that later. Now, in the center of your screen, you're going to be able to see the word standard. If you hit on it, you're going to enter something known as the preset menu, which is basically different shooting modes that you can customize for various scenarios that you want to use your camera in. Now, we're not going to be running through all the settings for each and every preset. I have a video for the Hero 9 on that on the channel, and I'll also make one for the Hero 10 in the future. But something that you need to know is that presets are available in photo mode, video mode, and in time lapse mode. So you can really fine tune your GoPro to serve all your needs. Now, something special about the Hero 9 as well as the Hero 10 is the fact that they both have a front-facing screen that's really, really useful for people like me who like to film ourselves and vlog and make YouTube videos. The screen displays a bunch of information like what mode you're filming in, your battery life, the amount of memory card space that you have, and whether you're recording or not once you hit the shutter button, you'll actually be able to see whether you're recording or not. 
This for me was a complete game changer. As you guys can see, I'm currently recording and my camera is showing me what I'm recording. It shows me how long I'm recording for and it shows me all the information I need to be able to use this camera as my main vlogging camera. This truly makes the GoPro's run and gun all round travel and vlog camera. And I think it's really, really useful to anybody who's new at making movies, making films, making vlogs. This is really, really amazing. And that pretty much completes our quick look at the GoPro Hero 10 Black. Just for reference, here's a quick look between the GoPro Hero 10 Black and the GoPro Hero 9 Black. This is my Hero 9 that I shot over a hundred videos on this channel with. It is a truly amazing camera and I absolutely love it. It doesn't work anymore but I have it for sentimental value. Overall you guys can see there's not too much of difference except for the little bit of minimal branding which basically has only a change of colour in it. The Hero 10 is in blue and the Hero 9 is in white. Overall the same form factor is fantastic because a bunch of different accessories that were available for the Hero 9 can be used with the Hero 10. I think it's really really great. Now you may not get all the accessories that I've shown you guys today because I actually picked up the creator bundle like I said so in case you buy a GoPro 10 you may have to pick up all these accessories separately. Okay, so I'm filming this part of the video on the GoPro Hero 10. I haven't really dialed in majority of my settings on this camera, but I have put it on 5.3K, 24 frames per second. I have a light in front of me that's illuminating my face right now. I may be a little bit overexposed, but okay, I'm just testing out the camera. It's not really set up yet. Uh, I have also set up the white bands to 5500 Kelvin to match the light that I'm actually using. So this is the image that I'm getting out of this camera straight out of the box by just adjusting two or three basic settings. I haven't set up my presets yet on the GoPro. This video was not about that. I haven't tested the GoPro completely. This video wasn't about that either. I haven't even shown you guys how to change your own presets. I haven't explained the menu settings to any of you guys. I haven't done any of that because like I said, this video was just a beginner's guide. A lot of you have picked up your GoPros and on the first day that you get your GoPro, things can be overwhelming. It can be confusing. It's a tiny camera that's packed with so many features and so many menus that it can confuse you. And that's exactly why I made this video. I've been using GoPros for the last four years and I love these cameras. They are primarily my main cameras that I use when I'm shooting life at sea. So yeah, it is amazing. What I want you guys to do after following this beginner's guide is to pick up your camera, point it and start filming. Experiment with the basic preset that GoPro gives you inbuilt in this camera. They're pretty good. They're not going to get you the best image quality, but that's not what you're supposed to do when you first buy a brand new GoPro. You want to walk around with the camera, get familiar with it, understand the controls, understand the buttons, go through the various modes like I showed you, see what you can get out of the stock settings in this camera and it's a great way for you to start filming on this tiny action camera. Now that's all you're going to get from me today for this immediate GoPro beginner's guide. It has all the information you need to get you started. I hope you enjoy your brand new GoPro camera. I definitely, definitely hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe because it really, really helps me out and it's super free, you guys. I've been shooting content for you on land and at sea. So subscribing to the channel is super, super free. It really helps me out. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends who just bought a brand new GoPro. And definitely stay tuned for more GoPro based videos in the near future. I'm Nitin Chavla. I have just gotten off my ship. The tech reviews are just beginning. Thank you for watching. Peace.